it can't sustain itself. It can't stay the same. So what happens? When something cannot stay the same, what happens to it? It changes to something else. So it's always changing from one thing to another. So since it's always changing from one thing to another, you're trying to hang on to it. You're trying to hang on to a permanent situation, a permanent relationship, a permanent marriage, perfect marriage, a permanent work relationship, business, children. You're trying to hang on to something, especially when it's good, you want to keep it good in that way and you do whatever you, you can, but then what happens? It falls apart eventually. Oh my God, I had a perfect marriage for what? 10, 15 years, it was perfect. What happened after? Well, the kids grew up and they left and him and I, we grew apart. So finally it ends and it changes to something else. No matter how hard you're trying, you can't make it. because you are operating as an individual. I wrote it in my book, uh, Lightning Notes of Zarathustra. It says, no matter how fast, how slick, how quick you're moving as an individual, you're always on the palm of the one who moves as a field. The one that moves as a field always has an advantage over the one who moves as an individual. Imagine you're running on, on a football field and you're very fast. So you can get from one end of the football field to the other in just seconds. You're the fastest ever existed. So you're, you're running on this field. You're running from here to here. So no matter how fast you're running, the one who's moving as a field moves up. So you're always running on the field. The one who moves as a field has complete advantage on the one who moves as an individual. So that's where the shift comes, that the awareness, the consciousness, the expansions, this explosion that starts to happen to you, it's happening right now for some of you who really feel connected to this teaching, to this particular teaching, and you're really connected to it and you're following it. And you're kind of giving up or losing your resistance to it. So your mind is bending, you're bending it, you're opening up. Something's greater inside of you is taking over the force, the love, the heart is taking over you. And it's shifting your consciousness as we're speaking right now. So there's an opening. You're willing to at least look at it. You're not maybe following it. You're not listening following blindly or you're, you're open. You're like, okay, what if 
I don't exist as a separate individual. What if everything I've learned up to now is wrong? This is not it. What if this man Zarathustra, what if he's right? Why don't I give this a try? See what happens. So what if I don't have free will? Let's examine that part. Let's examine the advantages of not having free will. So the mind, so you went beyond the mind. The mind is going crazy. It's throwing all these things at you to stop you from doing it. And now you're going beyond the mind and now you're examining it. Okay. You don't have free will. Nothing. Zero. So whose will is this? It's the existence. It's the oneness. God is operating through you. Okay. So Zarathustra, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to take care of my kids? How am I going to eat? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my car mortgage? Well, you are not responsible. So who brought you to this life? Who's carrying you? Who's feeding you? Who's giving you air to breathe? Who's giving you water to drink? That one is responsible for your well-being. Can you let go in that? Can you sit back? Can you just relax into that? Because you're, oh, 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 I don't have free will. What's going to happen to me? Oh. So can you just take a deep breath and oh, relax into it? And looking at it from that point of view. There is a force here that created the existence. Before you were born, who was running this world? Who's been responsible for the creation? For millions, billions of people that were born came to this life before you were born. Who was in control of them? Who was responsible for them? Who brought them to this world? 2,000 years ago, when man existed, they didn't have a dentist. They didn't have doctors. If you broke your leg, you had to live with it all of your life. Your teeth would fall and decay. If you had a headache, you had no aspirins for it. 2,000 years ago, who managed life? that carried humanity slowly, slowly, slowly to this point. Who's been responsible for it? Who fed all of these people? Who taught them how to do agriculture, how to hunt? Something taught these people, some information, intelligence was handling it. 